should you consider an ATX 3.0 PSU for your next PC build? Short answer, yes, definitely. Power supply manufacturers have been pumping out more and more ATX 3.0 units in the past few months, and prices have finally come down by a lot. You can grab a decent ATX 3.0 power supply for an affordable amount of money now. And this FSP Hydro G Pro 1000 Watt unit I have here today appears to be one of them. At the time of this video, we are looking at about 160 US dollars. Also, we do get 10 years of warranty on this thing, which is neat. So did FSP release a goodie or baddie? And long story short, what are the perks of the new most recent ATX 3.0 spec? There's one thing I'd like to briefly point out first, and that is that I noticed the Hydro G Pro is also available in an older ATX 2.52 version. So to be on the safe side when buying, make sure to get the new ATX 3.0 version. As far as what comes included, there's the power supply itself, all its detachable cables along with the power cord, screws, a few velcro straps, stickers to, I don't know, change the color scheme on the unit side. I see it as a pure gimmick and rather unnecessary, then some paper documentation, and last but not least, something really neat for us enthusiasts. A PSU jumper is included, so that we can turn on the PSU without a system hooked up to it or without using a paper clip. Most people probably won't need it, but for me it's a very welcome accessory for once. First of all, I would like to note how compact today's Hydro G Pro is, even in its 1000 watt version. We're talking dimensions of just 150 by 150 millimeters, which is something you'd come to expect from 550 to 850 watt units. Of course, this also means that they've gone with a 120 millimeter large fan only, and not 135 millimeters, as is often the case within this wattage tier. A very welcome feature for me is the so called eco switch on the rear of the unit. When having the switch flipped to on, the fan will remain off during low loads, only kicking in once the total load exceeds 30%. According to FSP, we should be looking at an average fan noise level of around 21 decibels, which I can somewhat confirm. If you prefer non-stop ventilation, flip the eco switch to its off position. The fan will be spinning constantly then. I believe the fact that the decision is left to us users is great and I'd like to see that from every manufacturer down the line actually. Fortunately, FSP has come a long way and appears to be listening to us consumers. The overall aesthetics and external build quality seems to be fairly good. I also like the nice coating going on here. As expected, it is a fully modular unit, so each individual cable is removable for better and cleaner cable management. We are dealing with a single rail design once more here, meaning that we only see a single 12 volt rail operating, rated at around 83 amps. Both single and multi rail units have their pros and cons, which we'll actually not talk about today. Of course, within this price range, we are dealing with 80 plus gold certification. However, while the majority of protections are in place, I immediately noticed that UVP, the under voltage protection, appears to be missing. I'm no professional in the field of power supplies and electrical systems in general, but I do find the omission of under voltage protection rather strange. So if the voltage were to suddenly drop, PSUs would then suddenly draw more current amps, which is why it's important for power supplies to also come with OCP over current protection. In the worst case scenario, the overcurrent protection would have to step in if necessary. Fortunately, today's FSP model does come with OCP. Still, I find the whole thing somewhat questionable, especially since the components used should theoretically provide UVP under voltage protection. So maybe there was some kind of misunderstanding, miscommunication between the engineers and marketing department over at FSP. Should I have made a mistake in my thinking here, please feel free to point that out and correct me. The Hydro G Pro provides us with the following power connectors. One 24 pin, two CPU 4 plus 4 pin, six PCIe 6 plus 2 pin, one 12 volt high power 16 pin, 14 SATA, five Molex, and even one floppy. The cables are of the flat ribbon type and come in at appropriate lengths. Only the 12 volt high power cable is nylon braided and is kept pretty stiff for bending protection. 
So let's maybe return to the question from the beginning. What are the advantages of ATX 3.0? In addition to the often natively integrated 12 volt high power connector without having to rely on any adapters, by far the biggest advantage here is the significantly higher tolerance to power spikes. It is stated that an ATX 3.0 specified unit can handle up to 200% of its rated load. Of course, not constantly, but this certainly does eliminate sudden crashes and shutdowns we are familiar with with some older PCUs when combined with newer GPUs. Furthermore, the power efficiency under low loads is said to have been improved as well. Basically, one can say that ATX 3.0 brings better stability, endurance, and in some cases, higher efficiency to the table. Now, in order to realize all these mentioned points, there's usually a need to use significantly better component quality. Ultimately, we consumers may end up having to pay more, but in return, we get a better product at the end of the day. One that should be able to serve us for many years to come. So I'll now take a quick peek inside today's Hydro G Pro. Of course, I should warn you that opening up power supplies and touching any of the components in there is very dangerous and can be life-threatening under certain circumstances. Admittedly, I ran into a bit of a dilemma here. I couldn't entirely remove the PSU cover because the glue was kinda holding me back there. In the worst case, I could've teared something off and since I do not know how to solder, it wasn't worth the risk to me. With the naked eye, however, the view on the platform was sufficient for me. The platform, barely any surprise, is by FSP themselves. FSP is, after all, a well-known OEM that manufactures units for even other brands out there and obviously use their own products. The platform design is pretty standard. Basically a half bridge topology, DC to DC conversion and all that kind of stuff. They kept it simple yet effective. To save space, we see a single 450 volt, 680 microfarad electrolytic capacitor by the high quality Japanese brand Nippon Chemican on the primary side. Moving on to the secondary side, there is a mixture of Nippon Chemican and Rubicon. As far as I know, these are all rated at 105 degrees Celsius. Finally, for polymer caps, they've also gone with ones by Nippon Chemican. Essentially, meaning that I spotted 100% Japanese caps in here, even though FSP only advertises their electrolytic caps to be Japanese. So the build quality, inside and out, certainly deserves praise. Unfortunately, my testing options are fairly limited. On the one hand, due to lack of testing equipment. On the other hand, due to lack of knowledge for PSUs. The measured voltages are actually pretty solid. At low loads, the measured value for the 3.3 volt rail is a bit on the high side, but under load, it evens out reasonably well. Everything's looking okay here. Now in the efficiency chart, the Hydro G Pro ranks as expected and does exactly what you'd come to expect from an 80 plus gold unit. Conclusion. I won't beat around the bush for any longer. The FSP Hydro G Pro, the ATX 3.0 1000 watt version can be described as good. No even very good. We are being offered great quality, plenty of power connectors, a 10 year warranty and 1000 watts at dimensions that can still be considered compact. I think it's great that we are given the option to choose the fan mode ourselves by making use of the eco switch. The only question remaining is whether or not you should get yourselves an ATX 3.0 power supply. Let's put it this way, nothing speaks against it. The prices have now become more realistic and generally speaking, there's good quality to be had, at least from most reputable brands out there. For new PC builds, it would certainly be wise to go with ATX 3.0, although I'd advise against an upgrade from your existing previous gen PSU. An upgrade is not always a necessity. If you're running one of the latest power hungry graphics cards, all you have to do is pay a little attention to ensure your PSU has enough headroom to battle those mentioned power spikes. Meaning, if you want to be on the safe side, an older, oversized, overkill power supply is indeed an option. But other than that, ATX 3.0 is clearly the future. So today's FSP Hydro G Pro ATX 3.0 certainly is worth recommending. With that said, thanks a lot for watching and until the next one.